Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today I'm going to be talking about my digital workflow and in particular how it relates to producing still photographic images. For those of you that only know me through this channel, you may not be aware, but I also run a digital media company and in that role I'm producing many uh, still images for clients and these could be anything from architectural shots to studio work or portraits. You can see some of this work on my Instagram account at username John Scarpa and you can also see samples of my photography on my personal website at johnscarpa.com. I've also produced a photo book which documents my travels throughout Venice which is available for sale so head over to the website and check that out. Anyway enough about that let's get back on track and have a look at the equipment that I'm using. Now primarily I use the Canon 5D Mark III camera as my main shooter and I have a whole bunch of lenses that I'll draw upon depending on the situation at hand. Now one of the most common lenses that I use is the 50mm 1.2 prime and uh, that's very adaptable for situations like this when I'm using it in video or when I'm doing portraiture in small constrained spaces. When I go out in location and I've got a lot more room to work with, I'll tend to draw upon the Canon 85 or the 130mm focal length fixed lenses as well. And for street photography travel and landscape work, I'll sometimes take the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark II Micro Four Thirds camera. Once I've completed the photo shoot, it's time to get the images into the computer. So the starting point for me is to use Adobe Lightroom, followed by a treatment of the image in Photoshop. Now, for those of you who aren't aware of these programs, Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop are part of the Adobe Creative Cloud suite of products, which you can get access to for around $30 to $50 per month, depending on where you live and what type of plan you're eligible for. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I edit my images with a couple of sample photos from recent photo shoots. The first one I'm gonna look at is a photo of a coffee machine that I took at an event in Milan for a company called La Marazocco. So we're gonna import the photo and run some basic edits in Lightroom before I export it out to Photoshop. Now I'm not going to go through the details of how to import photos step by step in this particular tutorial. I'll leave that for perhaps another more detailed demonstration of Lightroom. But for this one I just want to give you a general feel of how I work with my images. The first thing that I'll do is go straight over to the develop tab and you'll see that some options appear on the right hand side. Quite an extensive control panel in fact, uh, where you can really configure just about every aspect of the image. Now the first thing I do is I head straight down towards the bottom of the control panel and I'll go to the lens correction area. Now depending on what lenses you use and what camera you have, uh, Lightroom does have a uh, extensive range of some of the most common lenses used already built in with profile corrections and that gives you a slight improvement over uh, your image and takes away any imperfections that exist within the lens. So I'll enable profile corrections and you'll see that it's picked up that I'm using the Canon EF 16 to 35 millimeter for this particular shot. Then I'll choose to remove chromatic aberration which again is a slight distortion and imperfection that can appear within the lens at the time of shooting. So that's the first thing I do. Then I move slightly higher above and I'll take care of the sharpening and noise reduction of the image. So to have a look at the sharpness of the image, you can zoom in by clicking with your mouse into any particular area of the image. And that does look pretty sharp, but I can see a little bit of noise there because I shot this at 640 ISO. Now, even though I was using a 5D Mark III, which doesn't really have a lot of noise at that rating, there is still a small amount of noise that if I want to, I could decide to clean up by using the noise reduction slider. So I'll just move that about uh, 45 to 50%. And you'll notice that those little artifacts of noise have all disappeared now. It looks much smoother, but as a result, the image is slightly softer. So I'll use the sharpening slider just above to get back some sharpness in the image. 
So that's looking great now. I'll move along to the top of the control panel now and I might choose to adjust the white balance if I feel that at the time of shooting I didn't quite get the right white balance reading but in this case it looks perfect to me so I'll leave it as is. And the next thing I do is adjust the exposure of the image, the overall exposure with the top slider in the tone area. Uh, so I might just drop the exposure a little bit in this image so that I can bring back some of the details lost uh, in the highlights in that window on the left hand side there. And to further regain some of that image area, I can drop the highlights. And you can see now the uh, detail outside the window is starting to reappear. But at the same time, I've lost some exposure in the shadowy areas in the foreground. So I'll compensate that by lifting up the shadows with the following slider. And now I'm getting a much more balanced looking image. And that's about the extent of what I'll do in Lightroom for this type of image. Uh, it's looking really good. I'm happy with the results so far. So I'll proceed to export that as a TIFF file and I'll open it up in Photoshop for some final adjustments. So here we are in Photoshop. I've opened up the image that I previously exported out of Lightroom as a TIFF and I'm gonna make some slight adjustments here. The first thing that I tend to do for these type of product images is to uh, take care of little scratches and imperfections. So I'll use Command and Plus on the keyboard to zoom in and command minus to zoom back out and see in detail uh, any imperfections that I need to take care of. So when I've zoomed in, there's quite a few little spots and I'll use the healing brush tool and leave it as its default setting and just touch on all those little dots and scratches that appear just to clean up the machine. And it's quite a big scratch here in this uh, corner and I, to take care of that one, to take care of that one, you sort of swipe up with the mouse, hold down and swipe it up. And that's looking a lot cleaner now. So there's not really much to be done there, but that's just one of the things that I tend to do. And for this particular client, I'm working with a lot of black and white images and I'm doing some spot colors. So I'm gonna quickly demonstrate how I'll convert this to black and white and leave some color in place just to give the image a little bit more punch. So the first thing I'll do is I'll duplicate my layer. So there's a little uh, icon to the right hand side of your layers panel and I'll select duplicate and then I'll go to the image menu, adjust and I'll select the black and white option. And then you'll see a control panel that lets you adjust uh, the contrast of the different uh, color ranges within the image to give you a different look for your black and white image. So I'm going to just lift the red up a bit and that tends to give more contrast and really just play around with these sliders until you get the type of uh, contrast and detail you're looking for in the image. And then you press OK. Now because I had duplicated the layer, you'll see if I hide the black and white layer, the, the color image remains underneath. So if I wanted to bring out the red in the logo, for example, I'll go back to my black and white layer. I'll grab my eraser tool and I'll just quickly erase that to show you. Uh, and I've just now brought out the red of the logo in the machine. Now that was a very quick version of the spot color. If I was to do that with more accuracy, I would probably use the wand selection tool and get a much better, more precise selection area before I cut it out. And let's have a look at that. That's looking a lot better. And I can see that it's, uh, it's a bit rough around the edges. So I could probably use the eraser tool again but make it smaller this time and just paint around the edges and get all the detail that I want back into the image. So you do have to have a little bit of patience for this type of work.
And there's your final image. And you're now ready to export that out of Photoshop. Uh, to export, we simply go to the file menu above, save as, and select our desired image format. In this case, I'm gonna save it down as a JPEG. Moving along to the second image that I'm going to demonstrate today. It's a photo that I took during a fashion shoot for a local designer label. And in this particular image, I am going to make some basic adjustments once again in Lightroom before I export it out for editing in Photoshop and the final mastering. So similar to the previous image that I showed you, the first thing that I'll do is I'll head down towards the lens correction area, enable the profile corrections. It's picked up that I've used the 50 millimeter F 1.2 LUSM. And if I toggle that on and off, you'll see some slight improvement to the image. It just removes some of the barreling that you get on the 50 millimeter lens, even though it's a prime lens. Uh, it's certainly not perfect by any means, and it just improves the overall look. Once I've done that, I'll move up to the adjustment of the image. Now, it doesn't need to be white balance adjusted because it was shot in a studio environment, and all that was taken care of before the shoot. So what I do need to do, though, is just adjust the tone of the image slightly. Even though it was exposed quite accurately on the skin tone, when you have a high cr contrast environment such as this with a very uh, well-lit background uh, and you've got blacks in the foreground, sometimes you lose a little bit of detail in the shadow areas. So rather than adjusting the whole image and increasing the exposure, I'll leave that back to the default setting I'll just move down a little further and adjust the highlights and shadows. So the highlights are looking pretty good. I'm just going to increase the shadows a little bit and bump that all the way up to about 35%. And immediately you'll see some of the detail in the dark areas start to come to light, in particular the gown that she's wearing and aspects of the dark fabric on the chair and even some of the uh, woodwork on the side of the chairs is becoming much more visible. So if I leave that at around 35 to 37, I'm pretty happy with that. And that's really the only adjustment I'm going to make to the image here in Lightroom. Actually, one thing before I do finalize it, when I've zoomed in by just clicking on the image, I notice there's a little bit of noise and artifacting in the shadow areas that I've just boosted. Now, this is partly because I shot an ISO 200, even though it's not much noise, there is certainly a little bit of noise that's really only visible in those dark areas. So if I wanted to, I could improve the noise situation by going down to the noise reduction area and just boosting that slider up to about maybe 50%. Maybe that's a bit too much, it's a little bit soft. Let's go to 40% and that's looking pretty good. And of course, when you apply noise reduction, sometimes you get some softening of the image, which isn't too bad for this type of photo, but I might just sharpen it a little bit to compensate. And that's looking great. Uh, that's pretty much where I want it to be at this stage. I'm now ready to export the image out to apply further edits in Photoshop. To export from Lightroom, you can just go to the file menu and click on export, or the keyboard shortcut, Command, Shift and E will also bring up the export window. I'm gonna export this image out as a JPEG and just export it to the desktop. To open up the image in Photoshop, I'll select it and right click and open it with Photoshop. So the first thing I tend to do with portraiture and this type of photography is look at the skin tone and look for any blemishes that might appear in the skin and I'll take care of those using the spot healing brush. So if the brush size is large, just go and make it to the size that you need it to be and just tap on any blemishes that might appear. And they're quickly removed. Now, once I've done that, I'll have a look at the eye area and they're looking quite good. However, I could sharpen the eyelashes to touch by clicking on the sharpen tool and also I could lighten up the eyes a little bit. She's got nice blue eyes, which we could enhance. So I could use a dodge tool. And again, I'll look at the brush size and reduce it down to a size. It's about the size of her pupils. And then I'll just be able to brush 
in that whole eye area just slightly. And once I've done that, that's pretty much the final image. If I was going to do anything else to this, I quite like it the way it is. I could uh, adjust the levels of the image again in Photoshop for a different look and I could reduce the saturation perhaps. So let's have a quick look at levels. Go to File, Image, Adjust Levels and you can use the slider in the midpoint to the right where the highlights are or to the left where the shadows are and adjust the image until you get the kind of exposure that you're looking for. So I might just boost some of those midtones even a little bit further now that I'm in Photoshop and having another look and maybe increase the highlights a touch just for a slightly brighter image. And I'm pretty happy with that. And one final thing I could consider doing is to clean up the shadow areas down the bottom. I'm going to select around the base of this uh, chair and the model's feet and just get rid of all those shadows. So I'll use the magic wand tool. I'll click on a particular point in that area. And in fact, I probably need to increase the tolerance here. Let's go to 20, just so it picks up more of the uh, gray area. And just keep tapping and selecting until everything that I want to be selected is highlighted. I've actually gone overboard there. So I'll go one step backwards by using the shortcut on the keyboard, Command Option Z, back to where I was a moment ago. And just keep selecting until I get the whole range covered. Now, I think it's probably about the best I'm going to get it with the Magic Wand tool. If I need to adjust anything later, I can actually do so with a further selection. But I've selected all that area and now I'm going to go to the image, adjust levels, and I'm going to increase the highlight exposure to the point that those shadows will now dissipate. Those shadows have almost been removed completely. There's a slight imperfection on the shoe that the selection went over the base of the shoe, but because I have a layer beneath me, the original layer, I can now erase out the top layer just in that little section to restore that part of the image. So there we go. That's looking pretty good for now. I think that's a final image. Now I'm ready to export the image. I can go to the file menu, save as, and save it down as a JPEG or TIFF file or just about any other format you may desire. And that pretty much wraps up my process of editing images in both Aperture and Photoshop. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit me up with a like and also consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. If you've got any comments about this video, any questions about what I've described or demonstrated today, feel free to put them in the comments box below if you wanna share anything about your workflow. Also, put them in the comments box below, share it with our channel members and also consider hitting me up on social media and commenting there and I'll leave links to my social media accounts at the end of this video.